Okay, so this is just a quick supplemental sidebar to my previous video, Sonic Levitation Part 2. So Keeley demonstrated a few different versions of the weights and jars experiment. After some years of experimenting, he developed what he called sensitized discs. Now it seemed that at least one of these discs were used in a variation of the demonstration. To quote from the book Free Energy Pioneer, a reporter witnessed such a demonstration in 1895 and remarked that the absence of acceleration and speed seemed to preclude the idea of magnetism on the supposition that the disks at the top and the bottom attracted each other. But Keeley explained that the disks were actually sensitized or rendered alternately attractive and repulsive by energy drawn from the ether of surrounding space by means under his control. He also used the term polar and depolar, with the attractive disc being polar and the repulsive ones being depolar. <coughs> the platinum wire was connected to the device that would produce the force. So this is the uh, musical instrument in the sympathetic negative uh, uh, transmitter. So he claimed that on two occasions when an observer Remove the disc from the top of the jar. The suspended weights instantly, instantly fell, crashing through the bottom of the glass cylinder. So after the weights were levitated to where they impinged on the top of the jar cap, they remained there via the sensitized disc that was placed atop the jar cap. <clears throat> so what it seems is that the disc seemed to continue the vibrations on some level even after the initial the initial vibratory stimulus of the musical instrument was discontinued as if it were some type of sonic superconductor <clears throat> and like a, an electrical superconductor which will continue to, con to conduct the current even after the power source has been removed these discs seem to have a similar property concerning sonic energy in the last video we saw this representation of the polar and depolar forces, which refer to directionalized corpuscular vortex motion, with flow in one direction being the polar force and corresponding to the notes B flat, D natural, and F, and the depolar force to the notes D, F sharp, and A. So perhaps the polar disc was finely tuned to resonate with the notes of B flat, D natural, and F, and perhaps its harmonics as well, while the depolar discs were tuned to its, uh, its own corresponding notes, as well as the harmonics. If this is true, it would seem that Keeley had dem demonstrated at least a type of superconductivity years before the more well-known temperature-dependent electromagnetic superconductors. It appears that once the corpuscular vortex is set into motion, it may continue in motion if conditions are right. As we see here, even after the strength of the vibration subside, the egg remains in contact with the vibration or the vibrator for a short time before falling. The sensitized disc may have done a similar thing, but much more efficiently, continuing to conduct a significant fraction of the initial input sonic energy until the disc was either removed or a different note was played to lower the weight. So this one doesn't work quite as well as the smaller one. Uh, this particular resonance can is larger and has a lower resonance frequency as a result. So there's a lot of translatory movement as well as a slight propulsive force. But hopefully after, after some refinement I can get the egg to stay impinged on the, uh, on the vibrator. It would be interesting to see uh, how much lower I can reduce the energy and at what point you know the egg will fall back down. So thanks for watching. Catch you on the next video.